in spite of the uh, prolonged efforts to prevent them from entering in by both official and unofficial sources, some aid trucks actually did manage to make their way into Rafah. So this is, this is in an area that the IDF has already uh, completely just annihilated. Israeli troops fired on a crowd of Palestinians racing to pull food off an aid convoy in Gaza City on Thursday. More than a hundred people were killed in the chaos. Israel said many of the dead were trampled in a chaotic stampede for the food aid and that its troops only fired when they felt endangered by the crowd. So almost certainly what happened, like I, I, I struggle to imagine any other interpretation of this, is that poor starving people huddled in the ruins of Gaza City came out and tried to quickly get whatever food they could from the aid trucks and uh, the IDF who were guarding the caravan just shot into the crowd. And some amount of people may have died from a crowd crush, and some amount may have died to bullets, but all of it is on the IDF. Military officials said the pre-dawn convoy of 30 trucks driving to northern Gaza were met by huge crowds of people trying to grab the aid they were carrying. Dozens of Palestinians were killed in the stampede. Some were run over by the trucks as the drivers tried to get away. Jesus. Israeli troops guarding the area fired warning shots toward the crowd because they felt endangered. We didn't open fire on those seeking aid. Contrary to the accusations, we didn't open fire on a humanitarian aid convoy, not from the air and not from land. We secured it so we could reach northern Gaza. Gotta say, not really, um, not really, uh, uh, feeling strongly compelled to believe literally anything the IDF ever says. That being said, even if, uh, not a single Palestinian died to, uh, an IDF bullet, it's still entirely on them. A bunch of people rushing out to get food when they are starving to death in a war-torn area is a natural and logical expectation that one might have. Like, that all of this is a consequence of the IDF withholding aid to the area for so long, you know? Like, it's obviously, like, what else? Like, that's entirely on them. This entire situation, everything that has happened, the idea, because you know for a fact that the, the narrative coming out of the IDF is going to be like, oh, those stupid Palestinians stomping all over each other, killing themselves to get at this food, you know, like animals or ants swarming around. I mean, like, that—that that is the narrative that they're going to use. Aerial footage of the operation to bring humanitarian aid to the Northern Gaza Strip showing how the Palestinian crowd attacked the trucks. Yep. You know, the Palestinians just got so angry when they saw the trucks full of food and they just started hitting it with sticks or something. And as a result, dozens were killed from overcrowding, crowding and trampling. Yep. Mm -hmm. There. Didn't even have to look at the tweet to know exactly what it would be like. Starving uh, refugees in a war-torn area, huddling in the bombed-out shells of the homes they used to have, uh, 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 being denied aid, uh, racing out to get food as it arrives. You know, but they attacked the trucks, you see. Kamel Abdul Nahal, uh, Nahel, who was being treated for a gunshot wound at Shifa Hospital, said he and others went to the distribution point in the middle of the night because they heard there would be a delivery of food. We've been eating animal feed for two months, he said. We've been eating animal feed for two months, and he's in a hospital being treated for a gunshot wound. Whose gun, I wonder. I ponder. I, I, I put my hand to my chin, and I wonder. He said Israeli troops opened fire, uh, open fire, opened fire on the crowd as people pulled boxes of flour and canned goods off the trucks, causing them to scatter with some hiding under cars. After the shooting stopped, people went back to the trucks and the soldiers opened fire again. He was shot in the leg and fell over, and then a truck ran over his leg as it sped off. So, it, the Israelis claim the IDF didn't shoot at people directly, and this guy being treated for a bullet wound says they did. I'm more inclined to believe him. Earlier, I made the argument that even if the IDF didn't shoot into the crowd, that they still would have been responsible for every death. But to be clear, I still think they shot into the crowd. So just to, just to, yeah, just to clarify, okay? Not a point that matters, but I don't believe the IDF. Yeah, I've gotten two links now of footage of the, um, of the massacre. Footage of the, I can't show it. Footage of the moments when the IDF began shooting at Palestinians. I don't like just looking at clips like this because it's almost impossible to verify, especially when it happens like late at night or whatever. This looks like it's from Al Jazeera. You can kind of guess what I'm looking at from the noise, I imagine. 
The second link that I was sent is fake news. In the German news, the IDF contradicted itself by claiming that they were nowhere near the trucks, but admitted later in the same press release that they shot a, a few Palestinians nearby for getting too close. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like the link, the first audio that we listened to from Al Jazeera. I mean, they're, they're backing it from Al Jazeera Arabic. It looks uh, exactly how you would expect it to look. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan all accused Israel of targeting civilians in the incident. In separate statements, they called for increased safe passages. Right, right. The UN Security Council scheduled emergency closed consultations on the killings for later Thursday at the request of Algeria. You guys, you guys ready for the um, UN Security Council to be 14 people nervously looking at America, waiting for America to like get off for whatever bullshit excuse they're going to you know like uh, or all all of all of them like looking over at the rep and the u.s person just being like eh, like what do you like come on what do you think i'm going to say yeah this was linked uh a video from owen jones given how recently this happened and i trust owen jones i want to hear from him no content stealerino i'm sure owen jones wouldn't mind given that it's recent news words that's my job speaking words writing words talking about the world around us, trying to make sense of events, injustices, horrors, in accordance with my principle. That's, that's my job. I do these videos. I try and sketch out before what to say, but it becomes harder and harder because one of the great crimes of our age, Israel's genocide war on Gaza, is happening every day before us. Every day. Live streamed to us. On our phones, on our computers. One of the great crimes of our age, as I say. New horrors, new atrocities, new crimes. Yet most of our political and media establishments are complicit. And they could stop this, but they don't. And instead they try and portray those of us who oppose this slaughter, whose horror will scream down the ages as being the real extremists who need to be silenced. It's enough sometimes to make you feel like you're going mad. But we can't do that. And we owe it to the people of Gaza to keep speaking and to keep using our words. Today the Israeli army massacred desperate starving Palestinians as they tried to get flour from aid trucks to feed their loved ones or those loved ones who have survived. It's believed that well over 100, maybe 150, maybe more were killed and many hundreds wounded. Here's what happened. Gaza is starving to death, as I'll explain, because the Israeli state is deliberately starving its people to death. Israel has blocked humanitarian aid getting into northern Gaza since the 23rd of January. Today, as some aid trucks containing flour arrived, Israeli tanks and drones started shooting at people who were desperately trying to get some food, some flour for their families. I don't know if it was tanks and drones or if it was just regular soldiers. It would make more sense to me that it was soldiers because those kind of like off the cuff, uh, you know, like gunning into the crowd, like that tends to be more of a like soldier on the ground freaking out thing than it tends to be like tank crews or drones. I don't know how many people actually got shot. I mean, I guess we'll find out later. Or maybe we won't, you know? It's pretty tough to find out anything. Oh, speaking on with regards to people who don't know what Biden could possibly do, why aren't we airdropping aid into Gaza? Why haven't we been doing it the entire time? Like, what is, a, what is Israel going to do? Shoot our planes down? We could literally load up, uh, 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 you know, like cargo planes and airdrop massive amounts of food into the Gaza Strip. You know, we could do a whole... Berlin airlift situation, completely bypassing the uh, um, the IDF's ability to shut it down. I wouldn't be surprised if they try. Oh, let them try. If if Israel shot at American planes for engaging in humanitarian action, then that would be more than enough political pretext to uh, airdrops are very inefficient. Yeah, but we have to do something. Who cares about the inefficiency? Just do more of it. Then, what about this article says that it's inefficient? Like what? One in five big things of, of rice make it in? Like, what's the relation? It went into the sea? Well, then we should not have it go into the sea. They can't boat it in because Israel controls the sea to the west of Gaza. I don't... We are the United States of America. We can boat or airdrop in aid if we want to. Again, what are they going to do? Shoot at us? U.S. officials admit that aid airdrops will have a limited effect since a military plane can only drop the amount of supplies equivalent to that transported by one or two trucks. Then just keep keep doing it and do it more. And then, of course, those who survived or those who weren't shot and killed began to flee. According to Al Jazeera, Israeli tanks advanced and ran over many of the dead and injured bodies. Ambulances couldn't reach the area, so the dead and injured were carried on trucks, taken to hospitals which are barely functioning, lacking fuel, medicine, they have no blood. 
The IDF then thrashed around trying to invent reasons for what happened. Here's three of them. There's three different explanations we're hearing from the IDF so far. Initially, it was that there was a stampede that caused loads of people to die. Then there was a suggestion that a truck had actually driven by a civilian driver, had mown down a load of the Palestinians. Then yeah, that's also usually a really good indication that the IDF is lying, that you get an immediate rush of contradictory and inconsistent explanations for what happened. You know, the same thing that happens every single time the IDF lies. Like you, you immediately get like a wave of disinformation um, and half truths that have to be adjusted as more information comes out and undeniably sort of shifts the narrative and they have to like adjust it even more. There was a suggestion that actually that this was potentially Hamas stealing the aid. The IDF originally denied of course. It's Wait, so what, what, that's that's crazy, really? You're telling me that Israel was like, D dude, it was Hamas. You're telling really that ah, they went they went there. That's crazy. I think that's that's wacky civilians at all claimed it was a stampede it was now obviously became that became impossible to justify given the wounds of the dead and injured were clearly caused by ammunition so they then issued a statement claiming that those starving palestinians constituted a violent gathering which made its soldiers feel unsafe as they indiscriminately opened fire on them now to be clear their claim that they felt threatened was about being threatened by starving desperate emaciated palestinians Multiple sources and eyewitness reports said the Israeli troops started the firing. And indeed, I watched the videos where you can quite clearly hear Palestinians fleeing shots ringing through the air. I'd share them, but unfortunately, YouTube has a habit of age restricting videos with that kind of footage and thus collapsing their audiences. And of course, I'm trying to reach as many people as I can. As the courageous Israeli human... Speaking of, hold on. More video footage of the scene from Al Jazeera. Yeah, a lot of this is blurred from the video, but this is literally like a video of a person who has been shot in the head uh, right next to a bag of flour. Like, there is no crowd crush that did that to his face. Obviously, I can't show it. Human rights organization Betzlem report, the residents of Gaza are starving due to the humanitarian crisis Israel has intentionally created in the Gaza Strip. Their attempts to access the scarce aid allowed in led this morning to the death of dozen, deaths of dozens of people after soldiers fired into the crowd. Whether they were shot or trampled to death, Intentionally opening fire at civilians is a severe violation of international law and constitutes a war crime. This is especially grave given a crowd of thousands begging for, for aid. This has become known as the Flower Massacre. Say those two words aloud. Flower Massacre. A massacre of Palestinian civilians trying to... You know this one's going to be really bad for Israel narratively if it gets an immediate name. That's uh, It sounds dumb, but like so much of this is about narrative and like starving people getting shot at as they try to get food being called the flower massacre that's like an easy history textbook lock-in right there that's like a very easy like oh kablamo congrats you know people are going to be hearing about that one a century from now get flour for their families now israel has starved these people and as those few aid trucks with some flour arrived they massacred them as they tried to feed themselves and their families why is this happening because the israeli state know they can get away with anything Listen to the Israeli National Security Minister, Itamir Ben-Gavir. Here's how he responded to this mass slaughter of innocent people. A quote, Total support must be given to our heroic fighters operating in Gaza, who acted excellently against the Gazan mob that tried to harm them. Yeah, that's, so yeah, that's what you're up against, guys. When, whenever you're arguing with other Westerners about, like, whether or not it's technically, like, oh, uh, well, you know, could a soldier have felt threatened? This is the act, like, this is the actual representation of, of what, the opposition believes you know we're not arguing piecemeal little like uh, edge case uh, maybe this maybe that bullshit they're just fully just like get get to the podium put your face in front of the microphone uh we we salute our brave idf soldiers for defending themselves against that mob of starving people today it was proven that the transfer of humanitarian aid to gaza is not only madness while our abductees are being held in the strip under substandard conditions. yeah he's literally using this as an argument to not provide any aid He's like, ah, see, we shouldn't give them any aid. They should all starve to death. But also endangers the IDF soldiers. This is another clear reason why we must stop transferring this aid, which is, in fact, aid to harm the IDF soldiers and oxygen to Hamas. That's quite right, what you just... Least fascist Israeli politician. Actually, that's Ben Gavir. He might actually be the most fascist. Listen to there. That's 
correct in terms of a translation. You're not being deceived. Your ears aren't deceiving you. That's what he said. Israel has prevented food from getting into Gaza, starved its people, and then when it massacres some of those desperate people, Israel's equivalent of their home secretary, he didn't just admit it, he celebrated it, he rejoiced, and then he said this shows all aid should be stopped from getting into Gaza altogether. Now in Israel, tele telegram groups are ecstatic. Here's one example. First footage of the blessed massacre. You can see clearly they're fighting for their lives, for survival. Cannibalism is on the way. We must starve them until the long-awaited cannibalism. Do you ever wondered what happens when a society is overwhelmed by genocidal mania? It's kind of like that Russian thing where you will have campists in the United States arguing about like, well, we did the aggression by not saying we wouldn't have Ukraine join NATO sometime in the future. And then you look at a Russian telegram channel where a bunch of them are like gloating about their chance to rape a Ukrainian woman. And you get like a really, like, it really makes you wonder if the arguments that you're allowed to have in the public space are really representative of the interests of the other side. It's like how, it's like arguing with, with Nazis and the Nazis are trying to make some like obscure argument about like DEI or, or like repopulation or abortion. And you know fully well the only thing they actually care about is like doing another holocaust like there are very few things they actually give a shit about and it's not the things they can talk about so they talk about like you know edge case issues i just want you guys to understand okay and it's the reason why i've made these comparisons in the past ben gavir says crazier shit about palestinians than russian officials have said about ukraine if you take the statements made directly by kremlin officials and by putin they are objectively significantly more level-headed and liberal than the kinds of shit that Ben Gavir just routinely says. Like, the any effort at, like, disguising the hateful intent, uh, the, any of the, like, Russian um, tendency towards misinformation where they'll, like, mask their intentions with, like, 50 trillion disingenuous claims or whatever, and none of that is present in Ben Gavir, you know? He will just say the Nazi shit straightforwardly every time he's very very consistent and he is operating with the full permission and authority of the israeli government he's not like some random uh guy who won an election in a small district or something he was appointed by netanyahu he has a huge amount of power he is uh one of the chosen voices of the israeli government you know and he is uh and and he is extremely unsubtle well now you know as belgium's deputy prime minister has tweeted Horrified by the news of today's massacre of over 100... Some IDF people did run a telegram channel. A snuff telegram channel. An IDF psychological warfare unit ran a telegram channel targeting Israeli audience without approval. The army initially de denied involvement, but an internal investigation following Haaretz expose revealed its involvement. Oh, God damn it, Haaretz. Reversing an earlier denial, Israeli military officials have admitted the telegram channel 72 Virgins Uncensored was operated by members of the department of the IDF's operation Dire Okay, that's enough. ...with Palestinian citizens. Murdering people queuing for essential humanitarian aid. This is a flagrant violation of international humanitarian law and goes fully against the ICJ's provisional measures. Indeed, you can only conclude this is part of Israel's genocidal strategy. Massacre those looking for food and you will deter them from doing so in future. Here's the context. Famine. Famine which is deliberate and calculated. Listen to this for Melanie Ward, the CEO of Medical Aid for Palestine, and I warn you, it's grim. Just explain first why viewers, why aid isn't being allowed in. Where is the aid? It's very simple. It's because the Israeli military won't let it in. We could end the starvation tomorrow very simply if they would just let us have access to people there, but, but it's not being allowed. This is what they said on the 7th of October. Nothing will go in, and, and so it remains the case. And for people in the north of Gaza, it's even worse. Do you think there are people in the Biden administration who are just, like, patiently tapping their knees, waiting? They're, they're thinking, like, man, we really, really banked on all this being over before election time, and we, we forgot how long it takes for a population to starve to death. They like read on Google, like, oh, you starved to death in three weeks. And it's like, oh, okay, three weeks, three weeks invasion. Wrap it up, Netanyahu. And uh, it turns out they still had dog food, uh, uh, you know, animal grain left over in the Gaza Strip. So uh, they're, they're holding on longer than Biden expected. They're just waiting. I actually don't think you're wrong and they're sweating so far. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm being like uh, facetious right now, but not to the underlying point. I actually do think the Biden administration is sweating, like, like panic sweating right now, like insanely so. 
Like, I don't think they understand. They thought that the worst of it would be over long before the election. That's not how it works. That's not how genocides work. The real wave of starvation, the real mass death, assuming Israel uh, goes forward with the ground invasion of Rafah, it's only going to get worse. Guys, 30,000 people are dead out of 2 million. Worse because no food is reaching them anymore. And so my own staff, my own colleague, Abir, has been eating animal feed. And horrifyingly, the food that they were eating, which is food for horse and donkeys, is now running out and now they're eating bird seed. The statistics also tell their own story. One in six children under the age of two in the north of Gaza are now acutely malnourished. This is the fastest decline in a population's nutrition status ever recorded. And what that means is that children are being starved at the fastest rate the world has ever seen. And we could finish it tomorrow. We could save them all, but we're not being able to. Process that for a moment. Do you have a link to that, Skynet? I'll repeat, I'll repeat, I'll repeat. This is the fastest decline in a population's nutrition status ever recorded. That means children are being starved at the fastest rate the world has ever seen. Are those complicit in this? Not just by actively supporting this, so, by which point anyone in that camp should be judged as beyond depraved, but those who are silent. Are they not feeling any shame listening to those words? I would die of shame myself. Keep reminding yourselves, this is all deliberate, what you're hearing, this humanitarian calamity. Indeed, a quarter of Gaza's population are one step from famine, while one in six children under two are suffering from acute malnutrition and wasting. That's where the body becomes emaciated. According to the UN Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, this is a deliberate starvation by Israel and thus is genocidal. And yet you have the White House now examining options to begin airdropping food into Gaza instead of using their actual leverage over their key ally, which is completely dependent on them to get aid in. Now, finally, just listen to this. The head of the Pentagon who says that Pentagon. over 25,000 women and children have been killed in Gaza since the Hamas attacks on Israel on the 7th of October. You'll remember that the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry announced today that over 30,000 people have been killed in Gaza since the 7th of October attacks. Well, the Pentagon now saying that 25,000 women and children are known to have been killed. Ever since this horror began, we have heard non-stop atrocity denial, that the official numbers or the number who have been slaughtered in Gaza are a lie of the sea. We can't trust the Hamas-run health ministry. And they keep blazing that, don't they? Hamas-run health ministry, Hamas health ministry, so you don't believe what they say. Even though all the figures, the death figures, in previous conflict released by that ministry have been correct, even though earlier on in this horror, they released all the names and details in Israel assigned IDs of the dead to prove they were in fact dead, even though the prestigious Lancet medical... Yeah, I remember um, when the Gaza health ministry published, like, the literal, like, entire list of people who had died up to that point, which at that point was more like 10,000, every name in alphabetical order. And that was around the time that Biden was openly denying uh, the, the credibility of the Gaza Health Ministry's death reports. The one time I doubted the Gaza Health Ministry was due to a mistranslation from the West, uh, where they said 500 died during that uh, 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 bomb strike on the hospital, when it said it was just 500 casualties, which includes injured, which is significantly more likely than 500 died. Uh, it, it just, you know, uh, the Alf Shifa, yeah, thank you. Did you catch the link? Yeah, well, it says 576,000 people in the Gaza Strip are one step away from famine. I don't know what that means with regards to like the immediacy of potential death. The human body can take quite a long time to waste away. The Al Ahli? Yeah, isn't the Al Shifa hospital the other one? Not with that big open thing? I don't know. It, it's immaterial to what point I'm making. Medical journal confirmed the figures is accurate, even though aid agencies on the ground keep confirming these figures. Even though the official death figures of more than 30,000 killed is a drastic underestimate because it excludes those buried under the rubble. Many, many thousands were classed as missing, even though most are long, long dead and may never be identified. Even though the hospitals have ceased functioning as society has collapsed so much that many deaths are not being reported, even though only violent deaths are reported. Since Biden is responsible for this, would you say the actual human toll outweighs any good thing he's done as POTUS? I find these exercises in utilitarian measurement uh, extremely tedious and unhelpful. I don't know. Um, it's monstrous. Like, I, I, like, I, I don't know. Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, go ahead. And included in those figures, not those, for example, starving to death or dying of preventable medical conditions. Now, the Pentagon saying 25,000 women and children killed, that excludes the men who are innocent. Many thousands of men are innocent. Just because you're a man over 18 doesn't mean you are combat. Yeah, Athena, the number is, is probably more in the ballpark of like 50 or 60,000. Just a lot of people are buried under rubble and... um.
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impossible to know the exact number, but in all likelihood, the idea of us maintaining perfect death records in, a, in an area like the Gaza Strip right now, with the IDF killing so many journalists and cracking down on information spread so much, like, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty much impossible. And a new study has found that by August, on the current trajectory, one in 20 of the entire population will have been killed. This is one of the great atrocities of our time. Oh, don't worry. By August, it'll be more than 1 in 20 at the current rate. The current rate would only account for the rate at which they're currently dying, but starvation hasn't fully set in yet. It takes a long time for starvation to fully set in. By August, with that having set in, it'll be more than 1 in 20. You've read in the history books about all the atrocities, and you were shocked, I hope, when you read about them. You're living through one now, and you can see how they happen, and how so many become actively complicit. And I know what's going to happen. So obvious what's going to happen, isn't it? In years to come, nobody will admit that they supported the massacre of Gaza and this atrocity. And those who were silent will claim that they actually spoke out. But we know different, don't we? We know different. So few spoke out and so many were silent. And so many actively supported this horror, even though it was clear from the very beginning, based on what Israeli leaders and officials said what they were going to do. No excuses. So we've got to keep speaking out. Those who did this and continue to do this mustn't be able to get away with it. They have to be held to account. Because otherwise, if this is allowed to go, to happen, this massacre, this genocide, and there's no accountability, then we might as well all give up. Because any horror will be possible after this. And far worse will be to come. I don't, I don't really understand what... I Like, I don't really know what the the path forward is after this. I, I gotta say, I'm kind of dumbfounded. I genuinely don't even understand what the Democrats could possibly do to launder this, you know? It's, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of remarkable. I, I don't really know what they could do. Who was that? It was Owen Jones. You don't recognize Owen Jones? Unfortunately, they might find a way. I, I, ju I, I just, I don't know. The Biden administration assumed we'd all be foaming at the mouth to butcher Arabs like 9-11 was yesterday. Yeah, but that's the thing, Gawachan. That's the thing that I don't understand. Even after 9-11, we were nowhere near as bad as Israel is today. Like, don't get me wrong, we did f***ed up stuff in Iraq and Afghanistan, but the prevailing political narrative of our, like, occupation there was that they were, we were fighting for freedom, we were taking down bin Laden, Saddam Hussein was a dictator, and we were bringing, like, freedom and democracy to the Iraqi people. Like, that, those were the narratives. I'm not saying we didn't do f***ed up stuff. We did, but in terms of how it was sold to the American people, like, it wasn't being sold the way Israel is selling its genocide right now. Ben Gavir, like, there was, there's no political equivalent right now in America for, like, the American Secretary of State to starve out a population, and then, like, when aid trucks come, so the starving population rushes for it, they get gunned down, and then he makes fun of them and says that the soldiers who gunned them down were doing their, their job correctly. Like, there's no... Uh, uh, America right now just doesn't really have an appetite for this kind of butchery. Interestingly, the Republicans don't either, for the most part. Like, based on polling, it seems pretty clear that even most Republicans want a ceasefire. Like, it's not... The, the far-right American tendency right now, if it's very far-right, they tend to be Nazis, and they don't like Israel, usually. But even, like, milquetoast conservatives, you know, they might support Israel in a kind of, like, default, thoughtless Zionist fashion. But in terms of, like... Um, the way they want to engage with the world, uh, it's more of an isolationist tendency, if anything. The Democrats will blame Hamas and offer tepid, uh, tepid condemnations against Netanyahu, then if Biden loses in November, they'll blame Arab and Muslim Americans. I guess, uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. Past a point, you have to blame them more than the Republicans if they lose, right? Like, again, you know, it's, it's, it's willful... Uh, it's it's malicious abstemiousness and incompetence. Nah, some of us remember, and it was bloodlust. I'm not saying there wasn't bloodlust. There was. I'm saying that the political messaging, for the most part, was more measured than what Israel is currently offering uh, in what's happening in the Gaza Strip. Like, it was pretty common for the average American back in, like, 2004 or 2005 to just say we should nuke Iraq or whatever. Like, I'm I'm not saying that wasn't a thing. I'm just saying that, like, you know there are still messages that get sold to people and, and, and what they have an appetite for and how it gets sold matter. It gets worse from a week ago, the UN special report that Palestinian women have reportedly gone missing after contact with the Israeli army in Gaza. Also detained women are being sexually... Oh, they're, of course they're raping women. Yeah, 100%. Occupying genocidal armies love raping women. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The American state was clean and sanitized. The American people were bloodthirsty. Yes, I think, I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. 
Um, the a median American back in 2002 or whatever might have been a bloodthirsty Islamophobic lunatic, but the state laundered a lot of that bloodlust in a way uh, that it, like try, it tried to sell it as like a nation building project. Whereas both the Israeli state and the Israeli people are not only like incredibly bloodthirsty, um, but they're also acting directly on it. You know, like the again, there's no equivalent in in Iraq to like let's just starve out and systemically eradicate 2 million people. A lot of people died because of the invasion of Iraq, sanctions, and so on, but I do think there's a very important material difference between, like, the consequences of invasion, invading and occupying a country and a very clear, like, attempted genocide. We didn't genocide Iraq. There's a reason why that term is distinct, you know? Lots of people die uh, in invasions, but there's something kind of... Um, categorically different about an effort to just encircle and starve out an entire like category of people no i have not watched the latest some more news i like his videos in terms of information but sometimes the earnestness is a little bit much for me it's all politics drp 17d i'm watching it now you boy coming